Hey kids, this is Ivan. How you doing? Well, this is going to be a video response to Jeffrey MacArthur, uh, who has an interesting YouTube channel, uh, mostly about D&D, about video games, that sort of things as well. And so the video I'm going to respond to is uh, combat or role play, D&D combat or role play specifically. And uh, the video he released, I think, yesterday. And, and, it, and he asked an interesting question. It kind of, um, you know, dovetails a little bit off of some of the stuff I've been talking about. Um, where he talks about his own experience running a campaign of, of D and D some time ago, and you know the game didn't involve it did not involve a lot of combat. In fact, very little, you know, at all. And you know he lost some players over time due to that, um, in, in his estimation, because they wanted to uh, be involved in more combat. And so he talked about wanting to put together another campaign, uh, like a city campaign, where it was going to involve little to no combat and mostly just be role play. And, you know, so he was, he was kind of soliciting opinions and experiences and, and that sort of thing. So, uh, you know, I figured I'd give mine. Now, the reaction to this video um, was predictable, in my estimation. I, you know, there were some, you know, some of the actual comments to the video itself, but then some in the, uh, some of the Facebook pages that he, he posted it on. And I could even kind of tell, like, who was going to say what, to a certain extent. Um, so, you know, to me, there's, there's a few different subjects in there. Um, the first one is is predictably maybe D and D wouldn't be the best game uh, to to go play this campaign in, and I can understand if if you're really comfortable with D and I mean trust me it's me talking uh, that you would want to use that as as a framework. Uh, however, if you're going to go for like absolutely no combat whatsoever, um, then maybe maybe another game would be uh, better. And it's not just because other games might have um, detailed non-combat mechanics like social mechanics. If, if you want to go for a game that has all this, you know, these little uh, social systems and subsystems and whatnot. Um, it's the other part where, and I think like complex, complex games, apologist even said it in one of his, uh, you know, um, comments, um, and one of the Facebook, I think it was the Facebook uh, RPG Brigade page, that, you know, if you've got this, this character and you see all these things this character can do, it's part of your shtick, um, then all of a sudden you're in a situation where you're pretty much prohibited uh, from using what you're good at. Uh, in this case, you know, like Jeffrey said, it's, it's just be unintelligent. You're in a city. Um, he thinks like I do in terms of like, okay, well, if you kill one of the city guards, or you go around murdering people in the city, bad things are going to happen to you. You know, you, you can't just do that wantonly without getting into some sort of trouble. And of course, a and d party or, or a party of adventurers is going to be a little bit uh, like stick out like a sore thumb. So, you know, there, there's some real life consequences to like acting uh, in that fashion in, in an environment like that. So, you know, there you are. You go. You got this character that you know. All of a sudden, you know, you're, you're say a, a warrior or whatever. Your shtick is being good at combat, and so now, you know, you can't do what it says you're you're really good at on your character sheet. You know, now what? And so people, you know, there's a psychology aspect there where people are going to want to, you know, uh, they have this character that's supposed to be good at something. Now you can't do it. You know, I even mentioned that. You know, to, uh, kind of in passing to Runeslinger, I kind of you know. Uh, shot him a couple t uh, messages today and he said he said something like you know it's kind of like being a pilot character you know there's just a lot of you know, circumstances sometimes prevent you from using what you're really good at you know so I, I imagine that would be in the Star Wars type of you know uh, games where you're a pilot and you're just sitting around doing other stuff and you're kind of not twiddling your thumbs but you know what I mean you know <laughs> you're prevented from doing what you're really really good at um, so yeah there is the idea that maybe D&D &D wouldn't be the best game for that um, However, there's a couple other, you know, um, lines of thought I, I, you know, um, I had as I was, you know, watching the video and thinking about it afterwards is, you know, of course, there's there's a difference between planning a game where there's just going to be no combat. Well, what we're going to be doing is interacting or, you know, whatever it is, you know, um, or playing in a game like I've described before, some of the campaigns I've been involved with where that's just where the focus went over time. So it wasn't necessarily planned. This is just what happened. And so, you know, I've had that happen playing, you know, a D&D &D retro clone um, more often than not. And so, yeah, those games, you know, the rules are, are heavier. They're not rules-heavy games by any means, but the rules are heavier, you know, when it comes to combat. And a lot more, you know, um, open-ended. Like, okay, well, the rules really, rules really, really don't cover this, so let's role-play our way through the situation. Um, and so, you know, that to me is, is a different animal than, say, per, you know, uh, planning right off the bat. This is what we're going to do. Um, the other, you know, thing that came to my mind, and this is kind of like more like a question back back for uh, for Jeffrey, is, you know, if you're going to have your characters, you know, your plans to have your characters in the city, you know, and that's where the adventuring is really going to take place. 
And of course, it's really not, you know, a great idea for them to go killing people. And he even mentioned that in his old campaign, he kind of, you know, acquiesced is probably the wrong word, but but put in some situations where they could kill something. And, you know, to him, it felt like a little contri contrived and artificial, which, you know, makes sense. So the other question is, though, are the players going to be prohibited from going outside the city? You know, if, if they want to, uh, you know, go out and, and kill some orcs or whatever it is that, that's going to be available, you know, is that going to be something through, through circumstances or just kind of like maybe even like railroading? Um, that would kind of, you know, tick me off as a player. In terms of my own um, uh, preference, you know, I do like there to be some combat. I, I, you know, we you know what it is. I, I like there to be like a logical progression of events uh, or logical um, uh, bunch of uh, options for my character to have. You know, uh, complex games apologists even said like, you know, if, if you're able, to, if you're skilled at combat or if you have these other abilities, you're always going to be thinking of that as an option. You may not actually take it as your option, but it's always on the table. And uh, that's kind of the way, like, real people would think. Now, you've got all these, you know, uh, stressful situations. It's probably a, uh, you know, the way Jeffrey was describing, kind of a, a medieval sort of environment. So that, that, you know, violence is always kind of an option. It's just a bad option. Uh, but I do like to have some kind of, uh, not necessarily where it's prepared for me, but it's an option. Maybe a bad option, <laughs> but I like to have it as an option. Uh, because, you know, sometimes things get dicey and you have to make split-second decisions. Um, does it have to be the major focus of the game? No, I, I've had a lot of fun, you know, playing D and D or D and D type games, and you know, where, where a lot of what we did, as I've said many times, was just plain old adventuring, and then every once in a while, you know, we got into a scrap. Um, you know, I'm not the kind of gamer that you know wants you know uh, encounter after encounter after encounter in a session, which is, yeah, admittedly, you know, uh, like at least a couple of people said, well, that's that's what modern D and D has become. It's it's a different animal than it was years ago. But that's not necessarily my focus or my, uh, you know, where I really, um, you know, want the game to go. You know, if it happens that way and if it's a combat heavy session, okay, you know, that's cool too. I don't mind doing that. But, um, you know, I guess for me it's a bit of a mix, but it's not like a planned mix. It's like, well, what do we decide to do? How are we deciding as players to uh, react to the world around us? And if we have problems, like we have goals or, you know, there's a, there's a conflict in one way or another, well, how are we going to handle that, you know? Uh, and I, I don't necessarily mean conflict by like, you know, a, you know, you're looking at each other in the eye conflict. I mean, just there's a conflict of interest. You know, how do we how do we get what we want here? You know, you know, I think I've said uh, a bunch of times in the past, you know, I prefer to go about like gaming, like where I try to get what I want uh, through normal, normal means, mundane means. And then if that doesn't work. I fall back on my abilities. So that's kind of my take on this a little long winded. But, uh, you know, that's what I got.